Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna check out this light by Fiocchi. Fiocchi, I still don't know how to say their name, but they send me stuff, so we're gonna talk about it. Let's get into it. All right, so I kind of already said it. This light was sent to me by these folks at Fiocchi, all right, or Fiocchi, however you say it, Fiocchi, not the ammo company, the light company, okay? It was sent to me by them for purposes of making this video and talking about it, okay? Now, like I've always said before, and you're probably sick and tired of me here, sick and tired of hearing me say it, but if it's if these things are good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. And anytime anybody sends me stuff, I tell them that. If your product's good, I'm gonna talk about it. If it's bad, well, I'm gonna talk about it anyway, because you sent it to me. And I'm not gonna try to sell people something that I wouldn't use myself. So listen to what I say, listen to what I don't say, read between the lines if you have to but I did not spend my money on this, okay? This stuff was sent to me to make this video, okay? So, take what I say with a grain of salt if you have to, but let's get into this, okay. This is the Fiacci WL25. I'm assuming that means Weapon Light 25 because this is specifically designed to fit onto uh, M-Lock and Picatinny mounts. There's no key mod attachments that I'm aware of for this right now, but it's specifically made the light itself, the, the the pressure pad, those things, they're made to fit onto some kind of a handguard, okay? So that's what this thing's specifically designed for. I think this is the first one we got from them, maybe, that's specifically for this. A lot of the other ones are just handheld flashlight stuff. This guy has a mount actually machined onto the light body itself, all right? So this is a specific thing. So I like that. I already like that's a check box for me. Um, as far as the intended design of the light. Sometimes you have things that are just a flashlight that they sell a mount that goes on a handguard, so you put the mount on and then it like clamps on to the light and it's just, eh, it kind of works sometimes. Back in the day, that's what people had to do, just had to do before stuff like this came out. So, kudos to them for saying this is a dedicated weapon light. I like that, I like that. Okay, so let's get into some specs real quick. I'm gonna try to take a picture of this and throw it up there, um, and hopefully you can actually see what I'm talking about. But basically, this says the specifications on here, the light source is a white LED. Um, for whatever this means, it says that it's a 50,000 hour lifetime. That has to be talking about the light source, like the LED is maybe, I don't know if they're saying it's guaranteed for 50,000 hours, but after 50,000 hours, um, they're saying this, I guess the LED is gonna burn out or something maybe, I'm not sure. But it's not talking about battery life, not talking about battery life. Material 6061 uh, T6 aluminum, very, very standard stuff. Um, size and weights are all right there. Uh, 5.3 inches long, 1.3 inches wide, 1.7 inches um, high, and weight is 6.7 ounces, including the battery. Cool, I'm glad they did that because who's gonna weigh their flashlight without the battery? Nobody, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, back on the back side of the instructions or spec sheet, it gives you your lumens, which are 1200 lumens on high, and then it starts petering off. Um, to, well, I don't even say what the lumens are, but it just starts petering off, right? So the total run time, does it even give a total run time? Two minutes, 10 minutes, 100 minutes, 30 minutes. So that's 142 minutes. So whatever that is, a little over two hours, right? Something like that. Um, and then if you just have it on the low setting, which is 120 uh, lumens, then you got supposedly 10 hours, 10 hours of battery life. If that's true, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that'd be very interesting, but that, that, that's that's the basic specs of this thing. Again, hopefully I get the picture and put it up there for you guys to see. Um, but some other interesting details about this is this has a kind of like another flashlight brand that I'm not gonna mention because that I'm just not gonna mention them right now. Um, but a lot of the features of this are very reminiscent of this other flashlight brand, right? Specifically how this guy mounts up on here. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, the, um, th this guy is, it has a 10-tap, I think they say 9-tap, but it's basically a 10-tap programmable system in here, right? That probably rings a bell if you're in the flashlight world. You probably maybe know what I'm talking about, but um, th that's just some features and stuff about it. Let's, before we really talk about that feature, let's just show you what kind of comes in the box, what kind of comes with this thing, and then we'll get into actually showing you the flashlight being used basically, right? Um, so we're trying to keep this a little bit organized. We're probably already all over the board, but apologize, but it is what it is. Obviously you get your weapon light, right? So it's your light. Um, it comes with two different tail caps. It comes with a regular clicky tail cap and then a remote switch, tape switch, whatever you want to call these things that is compatible with M-Lock. And it also is, they provide this little attachment doohickey uh, for Picatinny. So if you don't have an M-Lock, 
you can still use your Picatinny mouse. So that's cool. So those are the, that's the light itself and like the clickies and things that come with it, the switches. It does come with two rechargeable batteries. I'm not exactly sure what size these are. They say they're 2600 mAh, 3.7 volt. They're not 18650s. They're bigger than an 18650. Um, I don't know exactly what they are, but they give you two of them, right? They give you two of them. So that's nice. And they give you a charger, right? And this is a USB to micro USB um, system in here. So that's what that guy is. But these chargers, I have used them. They work on other batteries, not just theirs, because I've used their stuff before. And it's kind of nice when you have a bunch of chargers laying around. You keep one in the car, keep one here, keep one there. Pretty much you can always have a charger. And they do work. They do work. Um, but that comes with it. You also, depending on your attachment system for your pressure pad, uh, you have two different sets of screws. You got a long set of screws that comes with this and some little wing nut looking things. Those are for the M lock. And if you're going to use the Picatinny adapter thingy, then you need these short screws and it comes with a little Allen key. That's it. Um, I mean, aside from like some little baggies that stuff comes in and the instruction manual, that's what you get, right? And in the box, the box itself um, is just a padded and the inside is just padded and whatnot. So. For those people that really worry about those things, that's what it comes with. It's not really a hard case, a cardboard box with foam inserts. There you go. All right, so moving on, let's actually talk about the light itself. Let's put this thing together. Um, we already charged up the batteries, right? So they're already charged up and good to go. Um, the positive side goes in first, right? So that's fine. We'll go ahead and just kind of show you the light with the regular clicky tail cap, all right? Um, this has three different modes. You, you have a high high, you have a high low and you have a high strobe. So I'm gonna show you those. I'm just flashing back here on the wall. Um, there is strobe in here. So if any of you guys are those people that, I can't remember what the term is, whatever, but if, if strobing kind of trips out your brain, just be cautious here. Uh, right now, we have it on high high, right? So this is high and you do a quick, like a double click, not a click. That's a click, you hear that? Right, but a half press, um, like a mushy kind of thing if you're just kind of you don't fully press it, you know what I'm saying? That's high, and right now it's on high high, so we click it twice, or we push it twice, um, that's what we got. So if we wanna program it to the next setting, you press it nine times, and then you hold on the 10th, right? So something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, hold, and it will turn itself off, that's how you know it programmed, I didn't let go, it, it turned itself off, so now we should be on high, and if you do a quick tap, two taps, now we're on low, so that's low. Hopefully that you can see that high, low. All right, so that low is the 120 lumens. The high is, what did it say, 1200 lumens, something like that. So we'll program it to the next one. This one's strobe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on hold. Turns off, so now we know it programmed. So now it should be high and then strobe. So here's high, a quick click or quick tap. There's, there's your strobe, right? I don't like the strobe. I mean, some people really like strobe. Some people really get into that. That's kind of back in the day. I honestly, I don't know. They, it has their place. It has their place. It can be overused, but it has its place. Um, but it has it. It's a feature that you can program in, program out. I personally, on my flashlights, I, I, I'm glad they have this setting. Because um, if you want those different things, you can use those different settings and things. I'm personally a high, high kind of guy. I would rather just have my flashlight be full power, it gives me as much power as it can give me whenever I push the button, right? If the battery's getting low, then it's it's gonna be lower, but it's gonna give me as much power as it can. So I'm gonna reprogram it back to the high high, which is the next setting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold on ten. Should there we go. Alright. So then there we go's high. And now we're just stuck on high. So there we go. Doesn't matter how many times I just push it, whatever, it's just gonna stay on high. So that's that that that's how you program this thing. Very reminiscent of another company out there. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'll show you the other switch real quick. So you just unscrew the back clicky tail cap, all right? And you screw on their tape switch, remote switch, whatever you want to call these things. I'm sure they have technical terms, but you all know what I'm talking about. And right now, this guy is in the M-Lock configuration, right? Um, you can see it has a little knuckle right here. This kind of sits inside the M-Lock slot. Also around where the holes are at, these sit inside the M-Lock slot and kind of help keep it from moving backward and forward. And then you would use your screws and your little nuts, right? These little wing nut thingies. Um, and those actually lock it into place. I'll show you that in a second. But before we really do that, I'm going to show you that the pad, you have a, a momentary only right here, right? Right here. Push that. It's momentary only. It doesn't click. And it doesn't make weird clicky noises when you do it. Some pressure pads, even good ones, 
When you press them, they kind of click, but listen. No, my heater just kicked on. That's not what this was. But no, there's no clicky. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. On the protected um, button right here, on the on, on the round button, that is your constant on. And there, there is no momentary there. You can't ride it like a momentary kind of thing and half press. It won't do anything. It's you, A fully depressed button will click and it will stay on, right? And if you're full, if you're leaving the light on all the time, then I don't think you're gonna care if if you hear that click, right? You see what I'm saying? I don't think that's really gonna matter. But that is um, that that's a full click. And I guess if you have it on, then you can kind of play with it. It'd be the reverse of what a regular pressure pad would be. If you just slightly press it before it clicks, then it turns off. I didn't even realize that. But whatever. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I, is what it is, I don't know, interesting. But the pressure pad um, seems to be fine. So, let's throw this on the gun real quick. Um, since we already have it in this configuration, I'll show it to you on a um, M-Lock slot, and then we'll put the Picatinny mount and throw it on a Picatinny system. All right, so let's do that real quick. All right, so everything's clear. I'm just gonna throw it on this system. This is not how I would set up my gun. I'm just showing you how I would how the light works on here, okay? So basically, I'm not even gonna mount the light on here because I don't mount my lights directly on top of the handguard, and I'm not gonna reconfigure this setup. But basically, if you're gonna use the M-Lock slots, okay, you use the longer screws, they're obviously longer. Here's the longer, here's the shorter. If you put it side by side, hopefully you can kind of tell one is longer than the other, all right? But we're gonna take one of those screws, push it through. You take the little wing nut thing, and if you look at the wing nut thing, it's a big flat side on one side, and then it has like a triangular effect, right? A pyramid effect, right? That smaller portion is what goes towards the um, the pressure pad, right? The big flat piece, the big flat part that goes on the bottom. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to use small words make things a little bit simpler to understand. Maybe, hopefully that works. Anyway, you kind of screw it in a little bit, not a whole lot, just screw it in, screw these in a little bit. Um, and then what you do is you make sure that these are all parallel, horizontal, whatever, they're all running one way. And then you'll position that inside the M-Lock slot of wherever you're trying to mount this guy. Use the included Allen key, and you basically look down in the slot, and as you tighten, that wing nut thing that we stuck in there, since it was parallel, it fits down in the M-Lock slot, and then as you tighten the screw, it's gonna turn and basically lock itself in and be kind of like an anchor. So as you tighten the screw, it's gonna pull up on that little wing nut and press everything together and lock everything in. That's how M-Lock works. It's actually pretty genius. Um, it's very secure. It's kind of why everybody went to it these days. But there you go. That's kind of what the pressure pad looks like. To be quite honest, I actually do like the aesthetics of it for whatever that's worth. I like the aesthetics. Um, the fact that it's a metal mount, it's not plastic, it's a metal mount that you can directly attach to your M-Lock is pretty slick. I kind of dig that. That's that's actually, actually pretty cool. Um, that seems to be a very robust system, right? I like M-Lock and I like that this is metal, those two things going together. That just seems good. Um, not sure about the waterproofness. It says it has a water, oh, it says on here somewhere, waterproof, I think it's IPX4. It says IPX4. So whatever that's worth, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna be scuba diving with this or anything. Um, I'm not sure anybody who would, but that is pretty cool. That is pretty secure on there. It's relatively low profile. It just, it looks good and it seems to be secure, right? So that's the main thing. So that's how he goes on there. It's kind of how he looks. Let's take it off real quick and then I'm gonna stick it on the whole system on, right? Stick the light on and the Picatinny mounts. Let's do that real quick. All right, so with the Picatinny, we're gonna go ahead and take off these little wing nuts. The screw will drop out, take off this little wing nut looking thing, right? Then we take, this is the little adapter piece for the M-Lock. If you look on the inside, the underneath, see it looks like a ladder. Those little portions right there interface with the, not M-Lock, did I say M-Lock? This is a Picatinny, right? So you, uh, these these lines, these ladder looking lines, they interface with the, the rails on your Picatinny mount, right? So, and you cannot put this guy on backwards. He's not gonna fit, kind of like a puzzle piece. If you put it on backwards, it's just not gonna fit. But this guy kind of slips on, right, the adapter. And then you use your short screws, and I'm not gonna over tighten it. And what I would say, even with the M-Lock, if you're actually gonna attach this thing, when you get when you go to actually attach it, not to like place fit it and you know just kind of play around with it, but when you find how you wanna set it up, 
put some thread locker on it. This thing does not come with thread locker and there's no thread locker on the screws. Put thread locker on the screws, right? You need to do that if this is on a real system because recoil and stuff is real and it will jar your pieces loose and then you'll have a flashlight flying around or the pressure pad will come flying off. It, don't ask me how I know, but that, that does happen. So here's our little host for today. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our our light, which uses basically, again, very reminiscent of another company, but it uses this big kind of a thumb screw, thumb nut, whatever you call this thing. Is it captured? Nope, it is not captured, so be careful. Don't lose this guy. Again, another reason to bring Loctite. So it's not captured, so be very careful. Um, but you wanna loosen it up a little bit because this piece opens and closes, and that's how it gets its retention, right? So we're gonna open this guy up. We're gonna place him. Hopefully he'll lock in. Yep. I'm gonna place him on the little M-locks, or not M-lock, the uh, Picatinny section I have on here on the side. A little bit loose, but that's my angle grip. And that's okay, so he's on now. And for me personally, um, I like to run my pressure pads on top of the handguard. That way I can use my left hand or my right hand to push the buttons. So I'm just gonna clip it on here and basically this guy just kind of, this this adapter, the Picatinny adapter, is kind of a hard, hard plastic, right? So it's it's got a little bit of give to it, um, so there's no screws that, that attach this adapter to the handguard. It basically just, you just force it on, it kind of molds over and, clip and snaps on, basically. Um, and I have had other mounts like that in the past, and I have not had them come off on accident. So there you go. That's how that guy sets up so you can hit it with your left hand, or if you're right-handed, or left-handed, you could use your right hand to push the button. And if you needed to, to click it on, you could just click it on, right? And click it off. There you go. Same thing. There you go. Something like that. So that's kind of how this guy would look on an actual setup. All right? Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um... <laughs> Because this mount on the flashlight is built into the body of the light, it does help reduce the overall size. This is a big light, right? This is a big light. You're not going to get away from that. They're not, yeah, this isn't a micro light. But for 1,200 lumens, that kind of makes sense. That's fine. Um, but the fact that this mount is not a mount on top of an adapter, or I mean, this one is particularly on this handguard. There, there's, an, there's a key mod to Picatinny adapter. So if you remove that and you just ran this on a standard Picatinny mount or Picatinny section on a handguard, there's not a huge obnoxious standoff, right? It actually makes sense. And I don't have one set up right now, but if I had a suppressor on here, there would be plenty of room to mount the suppressor and have just a little bit of standoff from the flashlight. So, I mean, you wouldn't really want it any shorter or else it wouldn't even work. But that's what this guy looks like. All right, guys, so that is the Fiaci WL25, the Weapon Light 25, I think is what it stands for. But that's this guy, just kind of a nutshell. This is not a review, more or less an overview, kind of showing you what comes with it, kind of the features of it, kind of how to set it up, and maybe how you might want to set your system up. Maybe just basically just going over the features of it. Anyway, if you like this, please do let me know um, if you like this kind of stuff. I like making these videos for you guys because these are, these are budget-minded flashlights in general, and a lot of these kind of videos that I do, it hits, I think it hits a lot of the market as far as the people that just want to buy a light to put on a gun, right? It may may not be their duty thing, right? It may not be their bedside gun. It might just be the fact that they've got a gun or they've got an item that they need a flashlight on. And it's it's not a life or limb kind of flashlight. It's just, it's a for funsy kind of thing. It's not something that they're going to be running out and, you know, a life depends on the flashlight, right? But they just want one, right? I mean, there's plenty of lights you can buy at Walmart, different other places and stuff. Not every single piece of thing that you have, have has to be like drop safe from space. You see what I'm talking about? Like not all of us are NASA Special Forces warriors. No, no, I'm not. So and some a lot of the things that I use don't have to meet that criteria. So there you go. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that, say it at that, and, uh, and that, that's that's what I'm going to say about that. Um, but speaking of the flashlight, since they did send me this, one thing I did work out with them, with Fiachi, is they sent me a second one. So this is a brand new one. And they said I can give this away here on the video. So I've thought and thought and thought about how to give this thing away on the video, because this video will be up for however long until YouTube takes it down. Uh, but it'll be up for a while. And so I'm just going to say the first person to, down in the comments, write out... Make sure I get it right. John 8, 12. Not the reference. Go look up John 8, 12. 
and write that verse down in the comments. The first person to do that, who is in the United States, because that's where I can ship these things, and is willing to look me up on Instagram and send me their address, the first person to do that will get this flashlight. I will send it to them. So no money on you. I'm just going to send it to you if you're willing to do that. So the first person down in the comments to write out, not the reference, but the verse, John 8, 12, I will send you this light. There you go. That's it. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting, helpful. If you got questions about it, let me know. Thank you, Fiorachi, for sending this thing out. Thank you guys for hanging around. Hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.